Let's talk about Josh Flagg because he's opening up about his split from Bobby. Bobby. So in the Million Dollar Listing LA premiere, which I believe is is this week, right? So the Million Dollar Listing is back. And in the premiere, Josh Flagg is talking to Josh Altman and he's opening up about his split from Bobby. And he's saying that initially he and Bobby agreed to a three-month separation where he moved into the Beverly Hills Hotel so that way they can have a little bit of space, right? Tom's house is broken into and he confronted the burglar and had to go have eye surgery and I sent my son over and he flipped his car over five times in the snow on his way home. Yeah, I'm under a lot of stress. So under a lot of stress, Bobby, or sorry, Josh decided to move into the Beverly Hills Hotel. He says that he was ultimately like so much happier at the Beverly Hills Hotel than he was at home with Bobby. He says that the second everything you do causes your partner to roll their eyes at you, it's going downhill from there. Sounds like Bobby was getting a little tired of him or a little annoyed with him in some type of way. Josh says that he was a total lightweight, or sorry, Josh says that it was a total weight lifted off of his shoulders leaving Bobby. He says that now he just feels relieved. He said that he couldn't be himself in the relationship and it felt like he was constantly walking on eggshells around Bobby. So it sounds like he's trying to pin all of this on Bobby, but I feel like there has to be like a little bit more to the story. Like why did Bobby get annoyed with Josh? I heard that they had an open relationship. I heard that they would have, you know, Listen, and to each their own. I know plenty of gay guys that have open relationships. I know plenty of straight couples that have open relationships. And, like, it works for them. They have modern relationships that, you know, it works. For, if it works for you, cool. You know, as long as there's no secrecy, as long as you're not cheating, as long as you're not keeping things from each other and there are very clear boundaries and clear, I don't want to say rules, but just, like, levels of respect and, you know, we are respectful to our partner and we're open and honest and we have good, clear communication, then fine. I think an open relationship could work. I personally don't want to be in an open relationship. I personally have never been in an open relationship. I don't think I ever would. But I also know that relationships evolve and they change and the dynamics of them also evolve and change. I think if you jump into a relationship right away and you want it to be open right away, I don't like that idea because then I feel like you're starting off on a bad foot, right? You're already setting yourself up to like not be fully committed to each other. And it's like, if you don't want to be fully committed, then don't be fully committed. I understand if you've been together for like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years and you're like, okay, we need to spice things up. We need a little flavor in this vanilla ice cream. You know, let's add some, some marshmallows. Let's add a few nuts. Let's throw in some pecans, something, right? That I get, that I understand. But somebody that doesn't want to be in a committed relationship and is solely dedicated towards being in an open relationship from day one, that I think could be problematic, especially if they're leading someone to believe that they can have something down the line that probably isn't the most realistic. And so I can see how possibly that's what Josh and Bobby, you know, that was the the understanding that they had, that maybe we can have an open relationship now. But Josh was probably, you know, telling Bobby that there was an opportunity for them to maybe be more monogamous, maybe settle down at some point, right? At least, and this is my own speculation. This is my own theory of what I think happened based off of what I've heard about their relationship. So, like I said, I heard the relationship was open. I also heard that Bobby Bobby really did want to settle down, but Josh didn't. Bobby wanted a family. Bobby wanted to get married. Bobby wanted, you know, just a slower pace, like a more settled life. And I'm hearing that that Josh didn't want that. So who knows? Maybe Bobby was ready for a change in pace and Josh just wasn't ready to settle down. That would annoy me too. Um, I'm pretty sure it'd be annoying for both of them. Because obviously Bobby wants things that he knows he's not getting. And so there's kind of that delay. And I feel like Josh would probably then be like, well, I'm not ready to compromise. I'm not ready to settle down for those things. But maybe it could happen in the future. That's where I think it gets fucked up in relationships. It's like if you're leading someone to believe that something could happen, but if it's not genuine in your heart and that's not something you really want, then I think it is leading somebody on when you convince them that there's a possibility, you know? And then it's like at some point you guys are compromising or not compromising, but at some point you guys are settling. It's one thing to compromise. It's another thing to settle, right? When you're settling in a relationship, you're doing something that really doesn't feel in alignment with your values, with what you want, with your goals, with your, you know, core beliefs, with whatever. You're compromising something within yourself, trying to appease the other person, 
right? It's more of a sacrifice and it's a, it's not so much of a selfless sacrifice. It's more of an obligatory self sacrifice. And so I think that's where things become tricky and that's where things become problematic because then you become codependent. And so it's not necessarily doing things. I was having this conversation with somebody recently. I can't remember who. But they were asking me, they're like, well, a committed relationship, shouldn't there be some sort of codependency? And I'm like, no, I don't think that there should be a codependency. There needs to be a healthy level of commitment and a healthy level of compromise. Um, And yeah, there does come elements of obligation sometimes, right? If you like want to go out with your friends and your partner never wants to go out because maybe you're just not somebody that goes out very often. But if that's a priority for your partner and you want to make them happy, then you're like, okay, fine. I'll fucking go out with your friends, you know, once a month. That's a compromise, right? But, you know, telling somebody we can have kids one day, if that's not something you really want and you're kind of pretty sure about that, or even if you're just not really sure I mean, because it could be possible that Josh is very open with Bobby and he's like, listen, I don't want kids. I don't think I want kids right now, but my mind could change in the future, but I'm just going to be very honest with where I'm at. And maybe Bobby wanted to believe that maybe at some point Josh's mind could change about kids in the future, right? That's a possibility, but then I think that's the fault on Bobby thinking that eventually Josh is going to change, especially considering Josh is the older one and Josh has a lot more, like I think the older you get, the more settled you become in your own ways and in your own lifestyle and you're not willing to compromise as much. So I think it's tricky. Um, I also know that the public image that people project in their relationships isn't always what's the reality behind closed doors. So it's possible that there's probably a lot more to their relationship that we didn't see. Again, all of my opinion on all of this is based off of my of what I've heard about their relationship, not what I know about their relationship, but also what I know about relationships just in that sort of dynamic within the gay community, right? It's very common. I know many people who have open relationships, many of whom I'm, I'm friends with or have been friends with, or, you know, some people that's it's worked out for them. And a lot of times it hasn't worked out for them. But again, I think that comes down to your level of commitment, your level of, of communication and all of those sorts of things. But I think once you start to compromise the things that you actually want to try to appease your partner because you're afraid of losing them that I think is where the relationship is doomed that is where I really believe that like you know unfortunately it's just it's not gonna work um but I mean listen if you guys want to be open and have three ways and maybe have a sex party here and there more power to you live it up live life enjoy it but when somebody needs that and it becomes kind of habitual and that's all they want out of a relationship then I think at that point it does become a little um it, it may be smart for Bobby to try and disengage, right? But I think in this sense, it looks like Josh is trying to pin this all on Bobby and make it seem like Bobby was the, the one that was difficult to be around. And I kind of feel like maybe it was a little bit of the other way around. I think Josh may have been the one that was a little difficult to be around. And I think Bobby was waiting for things that were never really going to come to fruition because Josh just didn't want those things. And listen, he's older, you know, not... Not to be ageist because some bitch on Twitter was like, you're ageist and don't be ageist because I made a joke about uh, Dana, Dana Banana from Salt Lake City, who I actually really like on the show. I'm enjoying watching Dana Banana. But she, somebody posted something and they're like, what would you change about the Salt Lake City cast for next season? And I said, I would dye Dana's gray hair. And I thought that that was funny. Okay. Funny, laugh, ha ha, joke. But apparently that was an ageist joke and it was sexist. It was sexist and ageist. And how dare I say that about somebody's white hairs? I'm like, you know what? Take a Xanax. So those is my thoughts about Josh and Bobby. Million Dollar Listing, Los Angeles is back. So be sure to catch the new season on Bravo.